Red Blood Cell finally gains some confidence, and we finally dive into the backstory of Helper T-Cell and Killer T-Cell. <laughs> Greetings, my friends, and welcome to a review of Cells at Work. This is going to be kind of a quick-fire review, as I just don't have a lot of time today, but I did want to address both of these episodes. I say both of these episodes because I'm actually going to be looking at two separate episodes of Cells at Work, both of which actually have a surprising amount in common as they give us some solid characterization for these personified cells. The first episode I'm going to be talking about is all about Red Blood Cell, and it's an episode which fully embraces the fact that she has no sense of direction. She never knows how to do anything without getting help from people, and the entire episode revolves around her doing her job delivering oxygen to the lungs, and not getting lost in the process. And the reason that this episode is so funny is that even though she is doing it on her own, she's still getting a little bit of help from the white blood cell, the one that continuously seems to run into her in the series. And basically the entire episode is just funny, watching her gain confidence as she makes her way through the body successfully and doing it for the very first time. It's a surprisingly triumphant moment for the character, especially at the very end of the episode, especially because honestly what she's doing is so common that it's really no need to actually have like a big celebration about it. Even the other red blood cells discuss this aloud directly to her. There's an even funnier scene at the very end of the episode where White Blood Cell is starting to realize the importance of her when suddenly Killer T-Cell appears from out of nowhere, beats the crap out of him, and tells him not to be so sympathetic and not to get too close to someone who honestly is doing a job that, to him, at least is not that important in the grand scheme of things. For him, the only thing that matters is killing. But at the end of the day, you can really tell that the Killer T-Cell is actually kind of jealous of the relationship that both White and and Red Blood Cell actually have. This episode had a lot of great for it in terms of the educational value. Again, it's another one of those episodes which really breaks down every single like thing that the Red Blood Cells do as they're making their way through the heart and through the lungs to deliver oxygen properly. And the fact that it's all personified through people and done through like flow charts and narration makes it really easy to digest. I wouldn't say it's the most exciting episode of Cells at Work, but it's definitely one of those where I walked away feeling at least a little bit smarter and that what I was watching was not a complete waste of time. The second episode is the one that I actually watched today, which again is all about the backstory of the Killer T-Cell and the Helper T-Cell. Now the Helper T-Cell is a character who's been present throughout the entire series, but hasn't really done too much. But honestly that makes a lot of sense as the Helper T-Cell's job is simply to distribute orders. He's there to make sure that people have a role and they complete that role. He's also teamed up with the regulatory T-cell, who, as the name would suggest, is there to regulate the various T-cells and to make sure that they fall in line and do their tasks. But what I really love about the entire backstory of these two characters is that they take it to this, like, boot camp type setting, the thymus, where all of the killer T-cells go to train and figure out what sort of roles they're going to play, or if they're actually going to end up getting kicked out of camp entirely. And surprisingly, the killer T-cell who's been most present in the series was not always the big tough guy that we know him as today. In fact, he started out as something of a wimp. We learned this a couple of episodes ago from the dendrite cell, but we finally get to see it actually happen in this episode, and we get to see the tense rivalry that he actually formed with the helper T-Cell, who, at least during this point in the camp, was basically the star student. Made everybody look like fools, including everybody's favorite blonde-looking JoJo killer T-Cell. And we get to see that as time went on, they began their training, they got a little more confident at it, and even would go out in the middle of the night, just like an anime series, to train and become better than all of the rest. I have to admit, this entire sequence honestly reminded me of watching the original half of the Naruto anime series. I see these characters as Sasuke and Naruto, the way that they formed a rivalry with one another, especially with Helper T-Cell basically being the Sasuke type, and then of course our Killer T-Cell being the Naruto type. That with a lot of the visuals just really made it feel like I was watching that anime series, and it also made it easy to understand what was going on here. Basically this entire episode just demonstrates how uh, Killer T-Cells are actually prepped and primed for their job to actually take down viruses and bacteria. What I especially love is at the very end of the episode, they go through this test where they have to walk through a maze and they have to take out a virus or an infected cell. And what happens is they have these macrophages, which have these like big cardboard cutouts of people or of viruses, and they have to attack the right one. If they miss it, they're going to lose, and they literally fall through a trap door that sends them to 
God knows where. Maybe they get a brand new job, or maybe they just destroy them all together. It's kind of hard to say. Uh, of course, Helper T-Cell does make it through with flying colors, and Killer T-Cell barely makes it out by accident, which I thought was pretty funny. The best thing about all of this is how these two roles have sort of been reversed when they've actually graduated, with the Helper T-Cell being a little more laid back and relaxed, with Killer T-Cell being sort of the exemplary form of what he always wanted to become. It's a funny little thing here, and it's all tied together by Dan who manages to take pictures of everyone and document all of these things to show to the younger generation, which comes across as funny and also kind of creepy and stalkerish. It's the only way I know how to put it. So, what's the rundown on both of these episodes of Cells at Work? I really liked both of them. I thought the first one was definitely more educational in terms of what it was trying to do, and the second episode was a lot more entertaining with what it was trying to do. The entire boot camp setting, I thought, was really fun, and they really treated it as such. And getting to see the development of the Killer T-Cell from a wimpy character to this big muscle-bound fool, I think is really funny. I'm glad we got to see more of Helper T-Cell in action, and Dendrite, as far as I'm concerned, might be one of the funniest characters of the entire series. I liked both of these episodes, but I have to admit I liked the second one a lot more. So I'm going to give the Red Blood Cell episode a 4 out of 5, and I'm going to give the Killer T-Cell episode a 5 out of 5. I like them both, though. Honestly, you should continue to watch this series. It's uh, just really, really amazing how it tricks you into actually learning things and still being surprisingly entertaining with some really enduring characters, I have to admit. So there it is. That's my thoughts on these episodes. I'd love to get all of yours, however, and you can tell me all of them in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this review. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down now, baby.